We have learned a whole new vocabulary in the past six months. Social distancing, flattening the curve, PPE, Zoom fatigue, pandemic. Did you ever say the word pandemic until this year? And you now can't go a day without saying it. But one regularly repeated phrase is not at all news. You know it from a commercial in 2002 when it entered our public consciousness. Can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? How do you build America's Good. largest wireless network? Can you hear me now? Good. By never being satisfied. Can you hear me now? Good. Until no matter where you go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Your call goes through. Can you hear me now? Good. Verizon Wireless. We never... At every single Zoom meeting, whether a service or this morning, Shana, a class, a fancy led program, or a meeting of just two people, everyone is unsure if their microphone can be heard. And they always ask, can you hear me now? While the ubiquitous problem of people being unmuted is a real one, the silence and separation that Zoom meetings highlight are real. So many people feel muted cut off and isolated in our pandemic world. They can't visit with family and friends. For weeks or months, some people have been staying inside. Even outside, we aren't interacting with anyone. On the street, in a store, at a gathering, we treat each other with distance and even hostility. We just wanna be heard and seen and felt and appreciated. Can you hear me now? Throughout the fall, RTFH members have been reaching out to help people get set up on Zoom and with webcams. Jackie Lamage was helping Gerard Cohen get online. When he was finally able to access Zoom and see Jackie's face on the screen for the first time, he broke into a giant grin and called his wife Mura over saying, come, look at someone's face on the computer. In our COVID world, we can't be passive about breaking through our isolation. We need to display incredible efforts to pierce through the suffocating world that is this pandemic. 88-year-old Nick Abtges spent every day with his wife Marion in her nursing home until COVID stopped any visitors. That didn't stop Nick though. He found a way to connect with his wife. Eighty-eight-year-old Nick Avkis and his wife Marion have been through a lot. They've raised four children, lost one to leukemia, and recently celebrated their 61st anniversary. They were even together every day after Marion entered her nursing home. So their children came up with an idea: put Dad in one of those cherry pickers, armed with a Patriots mask and a note that said, "Nick, he was finally back to faith." Fa Similarly, Mary Daniel couldn't visit her husband, Steve, in the Alzheimer's unit because of the virus. Steve did not recognize anyone but his wife. Without her, he was completely in a fog of loneliness. She couldn't see him as a visitor, so she got a job as staff. Mary was hired as a dishwasher in the memory care unit. Two days a week, she washed dishes, mopped floors, cleaned the kitchen, and then got to spend private time with Steve piercing the veil of isolation in his life. In our digital and computer world, we have been able to hide behind anonymous screen names and emails. We don't need to know our neighbors or interact with the world around us. Spending hours every day using social media as a substitute for real connection, feelings of loneliness and inadequacy will likely worsen. In the United Kingdom, the issue is so clear that a minister for loneliness was created. The new minister, Tracy Crouch said, nobody should feel alone or be left with no one to turn to. Loneliness is a serious issue that affects people of all ages and backgrounds. And it is right that we tackle it head on. People often confuse the terms loneliness and alone. I'm alone in the sanctuary tonight. 
but a decidedly odd feeling but I don't feel lonely. I see so many smiling and welcoming faces from our synagogue and extended community. I feel your presence. Alone is mathematical. Loneliness is existential. People might live alone, but enjoy a rich world of connections. People might be surrounded by their family or friends, but still could be very lonely. The quarantine only makes the loneliness worse. Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik, the head of Yeshiva University, wrote in his landmark book, A Man of Faith, I am lonely. Let me emphasize, however, by stating I am lonely, I do not intend to give you the impression that I am alone. I thank God, do enjoy the love and friendship of many. I meet people, talk, preach, argue, reason. I'm surrounded by comrades and acquaintances. And yet companionship and friendship do not alleviate the passional experience of loneliness, which trails me constantly. I am alone because at times I feel rejected and thrust away. We can act in this time of loneliness. We can challenge our own loneliness and that of others. This is a moment of separation and inaccessibility. Some encounter that all the time. Make a difference in the world we are in. Call people. Text and email are fine for setting up a time, but you need to hear their voice and let them hear the compassion and kindness in yours. Call family, friends, colleagues from work, classmates from school. Call friends you haven't spoken with in years. At RTFH, we've tried to reach out throughout these months to talk to people, to ask how you are, and to really listen to the answer. It isn't a solution, but it's a doable start. Don't take pat answers quickly. They're rote words of, okay, and I'm fine. They might really be saying, can you hear me now? We must learn many lessons from this year, many powerful changes and even blessings that come from this time amid the pain and sadness. One of them is that many people are isolated and lonely, including perhaps you. One of them is that we can do something about it. One of them is that we must. May COVID teach us that the desperate need for collect connecting and reaching out is there. Reflecting on our quarantine is the Israeli song by Hanan Ben-Ari called Longing for People. כבר חשבנו, ניצחנו הכל נגדלים בשמיים בנינו בן אדם, מי צריך בן אדם? לא יבוא עוד מבול בימינו לעולם, לעולם לא ניפול תעזוב, נסתדר בעצמנו חכמים, נכונים וצודקים וכלום לא נמצא מעלינו עד שבאת והדבקת ושיגעת והזכרת ובלבלת והבהלת מיד איך החזרת את השפיות געגועים לבני אדם פתאום שורף את הבדידות כבר לא תשים מפה לשם כל הפארקים נעולים, חתונות כמעט בלי איש, כמעט איבדנו את עצמנו, כמעט הפסקנו להרגיש. עוד מעט זה הכל ייגמר, ואני מבקש אם אפשר, שבע בוקר אחרי שתלכי. לא נהיה שוב אותו הדבר. We must learn from COVID to reach out for ourselves and for others, for the longing for human beings that we often take for granted. That would be a blessing to come out of this dark time. 
Can you hear me now? We can if you try. Shana Tovah.